Hey there guys, it's Luke here from the Cheese Carrot, and today I'd like to do something a bit different. So I got a new laptop, as you can see, it's called the Gigabyte P15 V3, and today I'm going to do a little review of the new laptop to kind of show it off, uh, give you guys the specs, specifications, the overall build quality, what you get like in terms of ports, and a little CSGO FPS test at the end, just so you know what kind of FPS levels you're going to get with this laptop. Okay, for specs, so first off you get a i7, Intel i7 quad core processor, uh, 4710MQ, running at 2.5 gigahertz. Now this is the V3 again, and if you get the V5, which is a slightly older model, which you might want to get, I don't know, because this was the last one, the V5 might be more popular nowadays. That comes in with a Intel i7 quad core 6700 processor running at 2.6 gigahertz. So it might be a bit better, but for my purpose, I chose this one because it was a hundred dollars cheaper. Now for RAM, you get eight gigs of DDR3L RAM out of the box, and it is upgradable to 16, which I did for around fifty dollars here in Singapore. Now for the main event, you get a Nvidia. GTX GeForce 950M with 2 gigs of VRAM, GDDR3 I think. Now this is actually a pretty good card for your eSports, so I'd say your League of Legends, your Dota 2, your CS, which I do a lot. Maybe even StarCraft, I'm not so sure, but if you're looking for something more powerful, you might want to get a laptop with a 960M or even a 970M, depends on what games you play. But the 950M is perfectly suitable for these kind of light eSport games that everyone loves and likes. For storage, you get a 128GB M SATA SSD. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it gives you that. You don't have to upgrade it. I'm not sure if you can upgrade it even more. Uh, when I checked the bottom panel, there wasn't, they didn't seem to have another slot for another SSD. So you might want to clean it up sometimes to keep it empty. For newer programs. Uh, besides that, you also get a one terabyte, seven thousand two hundred RPM hard drive. Now this is a bit slower, way slower. In fact, you want to have your boot system, your main uh, Microsoft kind of system, on the SSD, which is so much faster. So when you boot up, it only takes like 10, 15 seconds. So it's actually really, really fast. But for like videos, pictures, or useless stuff, you can put it all in that terabyte of hard drive. Okay, now let's go over the actual laptop. So this is a 15.6 inch display, as you can see. So it's kind of big, weighs in at 2.5 kilograms. Pretty heavy, I guess. I mean, I don't really mind. It's kind of acceptable for me. But the power brick, holy crap, it is pretty heavy. I'll talk about more uh, battery uh, later. And this battery also runs quite hot, so you might want to keep it away from, say, your hands or, I don't know, your books when it's actually charging and you're gaming. Uh, I'm pretty sure all adapters do that. Okay, so now, get, ah, sorry, to get on with the review, let's talk about build quality. So this is basically black plastic. It kind of, let's see if I, yeah, here we go. You can kind of see finger print smudges but they kind of fade away later you can wipe it with a cloth it'll go away easier and this thing it's kind of sticky it's not really metallic but I don't know plastic though feels really solid as you can see there's very very minimal flex it does not bounce at all and I will show you inside it's also very very solid now to turn this over right here you have a 48 watt hour battery so this is actually detachable, which is quite handy if you want to replace it, just in case it actually wears out, which it probably will. So basically, you just have to unlock this, which it is. Let me lock it, because I don't want it to come out. And then you would slide this here and move the whole thing out. Right, so here we have your stoppers for airflow, your air vents. Make sure you, if you game, it's preferably that prefer you prefer the game on an actual hard desk table for better airflow. Now this is the service panel, quite handy to have if you want to upgrade your RAM or your SSD or whatever. 
two screws right here really really fast and of course your two speakers now these speakers are actually pretty good they you get sound blast cinema 2 out of the box quite handy if you want to um customize your sound so add more bass and that kind of stuff okay now let's move on to the ports on the left side first Flip this over right here as I said again it's kind of heavy with one hand but if you carry it in a bag it's okay so you have your power outlet right here your as you can see copper sheet vent things this will I'll talk about temps later but this is actually the only air vent out so make sure you don't have anything near that or it will get smoking hot VGA output I think that is a Ethernet cable eSATA HDMI really handy one of my favorite things I actually wanted a HDMI cable on my new laptop uh, USB 3.0 and on the other side I'll talk about the front after this side sorry right so you have a DVD drive right here it takes up quite a lot of space maybe it contributes to some of the weight but it's pretty handy if you want to play some older games or just play a nice movie right you can see here another USB 3.0 port right next to that one you see the black one right there USB 2.0 port your headphone jack your mic jack uh, it's just so you know if you have a headphone with a mic and if you plug it in right here the mic will actually work as well I was kind of wondering but when I tested it out it actually worked so the SD card is actually the SD card input is actually in the front here so you would slide that piece off and you would have enough space for an SD card pretty handy let me just cover the little LEDs here I'm not sure if you can see the there we go so the first one on the left is your power so it'll be green when the actual thing is in sleep or on power there's your battery so orange when it's not charged and green when it's charged this one would be your hard drive space not really useful because you can kind of check it inside the laptop and the last one would be airplane mode okay so now that we've covered the ports and the build quality let's head on inside the actual laptop wait hold on a sec it's kind of stiff to open because it's actually very very sturdy so up top you have your camera and what is it gonna focus Right, uh, your two microphones, so it's actually pretty good for recording audio. I'll talk a bit more about the actual camera a bit later. So this is your Mac display, as you can see. You can't really see a reflection. Can you? I don't know. Is that the phone? I'm, I'm not sure. So you can't really see a reflection because there's actually a layer that prevents light or anything else from reflecting, which is quite good if you work in a uh, sunlight filled environment which I kind of do because I have a window right next to my desk so let me just talk about the hinge there are two hinges right here and they it's actually very sturdy I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not but it feels very very well built so if you actually want to keep this for a long time this will actually do no, it's just so even this thing, you know like Acer, HP, they're like reputable brands, but you know, this thing always moves. Now this thing, oh my god, this thing is never going to budge. And here, like the screen flex, it does not flex at all. I can't really show it. I only have one hand, but just so you know, it does not flex at all. Now for keyboard flex, can you see I'm pressing? There's nothing here. And kind of like the touchpad area nope not moving very very sturdy so a very thumb big thumbs up for build quality now for the keyboard as you can see here there's actually a number pad here so the whole thing gets shifted over the number pads actually it's quite useful if you do a lot of excel or you know some pre-calc some statistics i don't use it and you can actually uh here we go lock lock it so you would press function number lock to disable this which i do because i don't really use it now for the keyboard it there's actually a lot of space between each key so you have space and it feels 
pretty damn nice. It feels it feels pretty stiff, not too stiff, but it feels actually pretty good. Now, note that there is no backlighting, so if you want to use it in the dark, you might want to tilt your screen a bit like this to get some of that light because you're not going to be able to see it, or you just memorize your keyboard. Now for touchpad, it is a very, it's an okay touchpad. You can kind of, instead of using the buttons, which they provide right here, clicky, buttons are okay. The problem is I use it with one hand and with one finger, my index finger, so I have to keep on doing this. But you can kind of, you can configure it to tap it here. So it's actually quite nice and there's actually a system in the control panel that allows you to control like the sensitivity and all that kind of good stuff. So it's quite handy. Now, right here you have your stickers, so you have your statistics, which I covered before, your 950M, yada yada. RAM, except this is 16 because I upgraded, and your two years of global warranty. So wherever you go, I think you should be able to get it fixed if they have like technicians or an office. Right here, you have your Sound Blaster Cinema 2, as I told you, your NVIDIA GeForce GTX. You actually get the driver so you can record videos with Shadowplay. You can uh, optimize your games. It's actually really cool. And of course, your Intel Inside Core i7. All right guys, so this is the laptop with the screen on. So I'm just gonna show you the actual screen. So this is a TN wide view angle display. Not as good as an IPS panel, but still pretty good. And this 1920 by 1080 pixel panel actually looks really, really nice. As you can see, it's actually way better than say a 720p from a MacBook Air. Now the viewing angles are actually pretty decent. But you can't even see the screen. Okay, so right here you see that it retains a lot of its original color, like this. And when you pull it, put it back as well. This is the max. It also looks really, really nice. So that's actually a very cool feature. Even this kind of loses a bit of color, but it's all right. And as you can see, if I can angle it, so there's light. You can see the reflections right here. Uh, it kind of prevents the very glary kind of reflections that a I guess glossy screen would give you now the one thing that people have been complaining about would be the actual brightness as you can see this is the max brightness it's not very bright um, for me it's okay and this would be the dimmest setting again uh, it's not very very dim so if you want to use it at night it's not the best but it's right now to talk about temperatures, battery, noise, and all that kind of stuff to end. Oh my god. Cleaning can save 2.78 gigabytes. Damn. Never mind. Okay. So let, I'll just give you a close-up view on the couple of things while I talk about temperatures and noise. So as you can see, this is idling. Uh, idling temperatures is sorry, are usually about 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. And it's very silent as you can see there's not much noise now when you're playing a game it can go the temperatures can go up to 70 it never goes past 75 which is quite good and uh, it makes kind of a bit more noise but the neat little feature of this laptop is if you press function right here one as you can hear it turns on the phantom max setting so while in game, let me turn that off, it's quite noisy. In game, if you do that, it lowers your G, I mean, sorry, CPU temperatures down to around 65, I would say. I don't really use it because it's actually pretty loud. Uh, even with headphones, you can kind of hear it in the background. So if that bugs you, I mean, the temperatures are still pretty, pretty good. Now to talk about battery life right here. Okay, let me get my cursor. Ack. So, for battery, you can kind of customize if it's plugged in, what kind of power settings do you want it on. And for plugged in, of course, if you're going to game on it, you put maximum settings. And you can also game plugged in without the battery inside if you don't want to harm it and it works just fine. But if even if you put the, the settings to maximum perform... Sorry guys, um, I ran out of storage on my phone, so I had to move the video out and start a new one. So I was saying, even if your power settings inside the Intel HD graphics control panel are turned on to maximum performance and 
while not plugged in, you will still lose a lot of FPS. So my tip for you is just, I don't, doesn't matter, just when it's not plugged in, put it on maximum battery instead of maximum performance because it's not going to, you're not going to have the maximum performance that you can have. Now, you might be thinking, why is Luke contradicting himself? I put it on balance right now and not power saver. Now, this is because actually this, I don't really care. I don't even think this thing does anything. It's because even when it's plugged in, this will stay, if it's on power saver, it's, it will stay on power saver, which means I will get like really low FPS. So I just keep it on balance so I don't have to keep on switching it around. No, that was the, I was talking about battery. Okay, so when you're watching movies, or YouTube with sound like not that loud, you can get, I guess, two, in my experience, I can get like two or three hours on like low brightness and like pretty low volume. So it's not that great. Gaming, of course, I don't really know because I always play plugged in. I'm, I'm, a, I'm guessing if you plug, you keep it not plugged and you have maximum performance, I guess you could go, I tried it. When I, you know, when I was experimenting at it, it was actually pretty good. I think I could have got for like an hour and a half, maybe. So just so you know, and if you're just browsing, you can get four to five hours depending on your, sorry, uh, your volume and your brightness. Now, let's just talk a bit about the things I like and the things I do not like. So I should start out with the... Negative. No, I should start off with the positive. So the positives are before I go into CSGO, which I'll just wrap up the actual laptop review. Is it's actually a very good price under a thousand US. I didn't even mention this crap. The price of this laptop is actually underneath a thousand dollars USD, or I bought it here in Singapore for fourteen fifty. It's actually a really good price for an SSD, a terabyte, a nine fifty M, and an i seven. Even, I bet it, it could be like under 900 if you get the 4th gen i7. Another good thing is the build quality is actually really, really good. Superb build quality. It will probably never, it, it, I hope it doesn't break. Secondly, it's easy to upgrade. You can upgrade the RAM, you know, that kind of stuff. The warranty is actually a very good thing about this laptop. And basically, I guess... I'll just show you the design. I just love the design. If you, you can't see this here, but there are like diagonal edges. I think it just looks great. It looks really, really nice. Now the disadvantages or the cons or problems I had with this laptop. First off, the webcam is absolute crap. It is really, really bad. So if you want to record yourself, I suggest getting like an external camera thingy. Secondly, there's no backlighting on the actual keyboard. So that's kind of a bummer. And the trackpad is pretty mediocre it's not the great this thing it's okay you can program it um but that's oh i got a message that's all of the things i have to say about that so i guess the last thing is it's just kind of heavy i mean 2.5 kilograms isn't it depends on uh, for me it's kind of bulky in my bag I don't really feel it because I'm used to like a lot of books and stuff but like carrying it around oh my god comparing it to my MacBook Air stop messaging me it's actually way heavier obviously because it's a MacBook Air so that's kind of like whoa the good sides and downsides of this laptop so that kind of wraps up the review part now let's I'm gonna get into CSGO to show you guys what kind of FPS you're gonna get on the Gigabyte P15 V3, so I'll see you in the game. Okay guys, so I am in CSGO right here, as you can see, oh my god, it looks really, really good on full HD. Now let me just show you the video settings which I'm at. So first off, okay, so as you can see here, widescreen, your usual full HD, and the advanced video options are all set on high, very high, your anti-aliasing and you know, like fx8 and whatever or like the max possible and if i go out right here we can see my fps hovering about a hundred if i look at the sky if i look at the sky it gives me around 140 and if i look at what can i look at 
so yeah basically oh it went down to 90 somewhere so you get around 100 fps 100 maybe 100 to 140 depending on what you look at on uh, everything on high and full HD which is this is basically the max uh, graphic settings which you graphic setting which you can go up to oh the rounds ending let me just switch it to what I use which is also full HD because it just looks so nice but I oh, yeah, I get it yeah I lost whatever I put it I put everything on low because you no know, with the full HD it already looks pretty nice let me just try right here and apply that okay now while it's applying let me just tell you that these numbers are, might be a bit higher than what you get when you get it out of the box because I actually unparked my CPU cores which basically means I took the limit off I guess that's kind of it off my cores so instead of wait let me just show you the FPS of this first then I'll explain okay, open up. right so here I get a 190 the sky 200 220 if I look at the sky it's actually well, much better for playing you get about a hundred more fps if you put everything on low now if you if i didn't unpark my core i would get maybe 140 150 so it honestly makes a very big difference and it's very simple to do so just search it up somewhere just do how to unpark your core if you have more which you should and it's actually a very good tip for increasing your fps so that's basically it yeah you get around 180 190 maybe 200 on full HD and low settings. Now this is without any bots, but it's still in dust too, so you might get a bit lower playing a comp and even higher if you're playing a training map. Now, what was I gonna say? Yeah, if you play on like 800 to 600 by 600, which I mean, some people do, you can get around two, 300 maybe FPS. So that's pretty crazy if you want, but I like it full HD, it just looks nice. So thanks again. Oh, I just or not. You can hear the sound. I mean, yeah, the sound of the laptop working while it's playing the game. So, I mean, from here it's kind of reasonable. I don't really mind. You know, every laptop is supposed to make some noise. It's just the nature of them. So that wraps it up for today's review of the Gigabyte P15 V3 model. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Please leave a like, subscribe, and. Yeah, I'll see you next time with some more cool videos and where I'm going to start making some CSGO videos with my brother Guy once again with this new setup, which... Whoops, okay, can I tear this win? It's actually much better because I have G GeForce Shadowplay to help me. So I'm going to start rambling about. It's Luke here from the Cheesy Carrot, and I'll see you next time. Bye!